Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm here with Randy Mullen and we're going to be talking about how Randy has been able to raise over $9 million in capital and bought over $13 million in real estate before he hit the age of 30. I'm so excited that Randy's here to talk with you about his success in real estate. Before we get into it with Randy, if you haven't done so already, do me a favor, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's do this. Randy, thanks for taking some time out of your day to join me. I appreciate having you here with me to share your knowledge. Before we jump in, uh, tell me a little bit about or tell everyone a little bit about you and what you do as a real estate investor. Uh, so I co-founded a company called The Reinvestors uh, with my partner, Steve. And uh, basically our mission and motto is to financially educate 1 million people and inspire them to invest in real estate so they can live a more fulfilled life. And kind of our mission is really around teaching people around how they can use the equity in their homes, giving them some good products to invest into, and then really using the philanthropic approach to show them like, hey, you know, everyone was taught, don't make money. It's not good for you. Having wealth is bad. We love showing them that having wealth is great because then they can use that money to do really awesome things. So uh, super excited to get on here today and just share a little bit about the story and, and how it all came about. I love your story. Um, we, we probably have similar past in, in that we started relatively young in real estate investing. Uh, what you've been able to accomplish in that time versus what I was able to accomplish is night and day. Um, so, so let's start there. When did you get started with real estate investing and, and what was the, what was the first thing that you, that got you excited and, and got you on this path? Yeah, well, I started out with a lower middle-class family, uh, growing up, you know, um, dad worked very hard. Mom was stay at home. Mom, uh, didn't really have the luxuries of what we wanted to do in life. Uh, but was a very loving family. And so um, as I grew up, I always thought, hey, if I work hard, as soon as I start at 16 years old, I'll get a job and I'll pay for all my own stuff and I'll be able to buy a house before I'm 25 is one of my goals. Uh, I got into the electrical trade very early and had a lot of success. And by 22, was a journeyman electrician running multi-million dollar job sites, big crews. So I had that kind of experience uh, growing up where I was uh, at a higher level through my entire process of going through the trades. And then I uh, was very lucky to uh, get into the market at 25 years old, uh, just after my 25th birthday. And then unfortunately, the guy that mentored me through my uh, electrical career, uh, his name is Rob. Uh, he was uh, about 20 years older than me. And um, I bought my house. He came over that day. We celebrated with a six pack. And then a few days later, unfortunately, he got hit by a telephone pole on a job site. And so this guy that I've worked so much with, I spent four or five years working beside one of my best friends uh, in talks to go buy my company, um, all of a sudden just got pulled away from me uh, in, a, in a freak accident. And so here I was, just bought my brand new house, sitting in it going, well, is this the rest of my life? Like, do I spend the next 20 years to get into the same position that he was, where it can all of a sudden be over overnight? And so, uh, just all of a sudden, uh, I got this quote and, and somebody sent it to me and it was from Josh Ships. And it said, you either get bitter or you get better. You take what's happened to you and you allow it to tear you down or you allow it to make you a better person. The choice does, does not belong to faith. The choice belongs to you. And like, I'd say within three days of losing my best friend, I just made the decision like, hey, I'm not going to let this ruin my life. I'm going to allow this to be the best thing that's ever happened to me. And so I just went on to Google and started studying self-development, self-help, and then uh, typed in how to make enough money that I never have to work again. And real estate investing popped up. So uh, I took a course known to a lot of people called Keyspire and went through it. And uh, being an uh, electrician, math was very easy for me. And at the course, one of the trainers said to me, he said, man, you're so young. Why don't you rent your house out? Take the money that you make from the cash flow of your property and go rent somewhere else. And then you live free of rent, but you still get all the benefits of owning real estate. And in that moment, my life changed forever, rented my house out, made 500 bucks cash, went and rented a room at somebody's house. All my friends were like, you're crazy. You just bought a brand new three bedroom, you know, 1600 square foot townhouse. And now you just moved into some crappy people. I didn't know the tenants that I moved in with or the other roommates that I moved in with and just lived there for uh, six, seven months while I started building up my real estate investing career, but I had no bills right? But I was still getting the benefits of everything. And then uh, from there, I was able to continue and grow. So that's kind of the story of how I got into it and got inspired because uh, literally just Googled how to make money, real estate showed up. 
And uh, because I was in the right mindset at the right time and had this, um, you know, a lot of people say when you, when you face a near death experience, like, I just want to go experience life. I want to go jump out of a plane. I have like this adrenaline to do a lot of stuff. I had the same thing in, but in, in like um, money, like I wasn't worried about anything. I just like, I was 25. I had a house. I could literally fall back on my, my career. I had, a, I was very successful. Um, everybody, I could have gone and worked for any company I wanted to. So why not go try something new and fun? And so that's kind of what led me down the path of real estate investing. What did you do from that point on? Because that's, you know, um, you know, that's a great introduction. You get a little bit of education, but taking a little bit of education, which many people have done or tried to do and getting to where you are now is a big leap. So what happened in between and, and filling the gaps for us along the way? As I started studying more real estate and uh, did a three-day training course and just really found out that education was the key component missing from so many people. My parents paid their house off, but were still living paycheck to paycheck. Rob owned a home, but didn't set himself up with the right insurances. And there's just all these instances where these people were uh, doing the right things, but they just weren't educated enough in this space to make the right moves. And so my business partner, Steve and I, uh, we flew out to Toronto to one of the events and we were just chatting with some people about this. And I vividly remember it saying to someone like, where do you live? And we're like, oh, we're from Victoria, BC. And they're like, man, there's a lot of old money there. If you can figure out how to unlock the equity in Victoria, you'll help a lot of people out and you'll make a lot of money along the way. And that was kind of the turning point for me. I'm like, wow, like it's it, a, it's not so much about me making money, but it was about helping other people. If I could help people like Rob and my parents and these other people learn how to get that money out working for it, we can literally change the financial um, aspect of the, you know, my friend's circle, the people around me, we can start helping people retire better. So we came back and we started a meetup and which was very, uh, you know, spur of the moment, just two young guys, you know, I'm 25, my business partner's 27 at the time or something like that. And we're like, let's just start a meetup. Somebody's like, how are people going to take us seriously? How are we going to get credibility in this? So we started a monthly meetup where we um, literally just brought in expert speakers, lawyers, accountants, real estate agents, um, anybody that spoke in the real estate profession, and they would just speak to our audience. We'd go put the people in there. They'd speak to our audience. Steve and I would be like, welcome to the meetup. Here's a guest speaker. We'd sit in the back of the room, take a ton of notes, and then go back up and say, thank you so much for coming. Head on out. And then we'd say, any questions, email us so that we can answer them later. And uh, we would answer the questions after going home and Googling them. So we're just very infatuated with the whole concept <laughs> of real estate investing. And um, it gained us a lot of credibility in the space. And we're, we're very lucky to uh, get some mentoring along the way, uh, you know, th through there, the guy that taught the three-day course. Um, I, don't, I don't know what it is, Darren. There's, uh, I have this energy that I've always brought to every room. Like when I, when I feel like going to the room, I can just, I just get anything I want. And through there, I just share my story and my ambition. And um, randomly, we were running a meetup one night and about 20 minutes before it started, I get a call from the three-day trainer from the workshop that we went to. He was like, hey, don't know if you remember me. I was the guy that ran your three-day workshop. Don't know what caused me to phone you right now. What are you doing in real estate? And I'm like, oh, I'm running a meetup. I actually did what you said. I rented out my house. I did this. I did everything you asked me to do. And he's like, how do you feel about coming and flying out to Toronto again and coming to do a three-day mentorship with me and five other people that are under the age of 30? I don't know what it is. I just want to mentor these kids and take them up to the top. So I was like, sure, let's do it. So uh, within two weeks, I flew out there and it was actually on the one-year anniversary of Rob's passing uh, that I was sitting in this room with people and um, learning real estate investing. Everybody else in this room had done 10 to 100 deals I'd only ever bought my first residence. I still hadn't bought a second house yet. And I just kept looking like, I don't belong here. <laughs> like, what am I doing here? And, um, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that story of like, hey, I don't belong in this room. But what I learned very quickly was that I had this, the mindset and the skill sets to do everything. They were just taking the action that I wasn't. They were out there putting themselves on the line being like, I got a property on a contract. I've talked to this person about JV and I've done this. Coming back from that, uh, I told Steve, like, let's do this. Just started calling, found the house with a suite, went and bought it. And as soon as we closed that one, we closed three properties in four months. And then all with JVs through our um, meetup group. And then just, again, continuing to grow and network, we were able to uh, purchase a fiveplex that we bought for a million dollars and renovated for about 200 grand. 
and uh, got a $1.1 million mortgage on it. And so our investor only had $100,000 into it. Uh, he did it all cash, which was like incredible at the age of 26 now to get somebody to write you a check for a million, $1.2 million cash saying, hey, we trust you guys, just go flip this five flex. And it was uh, just a very surreal moment for us. And then from there, it just expanded and grew into, um, you know, meeting more people and getting into different projects and, and doing more JVs, but getting through that first hurdle of like the mindset of like an, uh, analysis by paralysis, then seeing all these people that, you know, the, Ray would ask a question and he'd be like, you know, how do you, can you guys go cold call this property or what do you guys see in this? And what are you doing there? And I could answer as if the same, if not better than some of the people in the room. And that was just one of the turning points for me was understanding how these people had so many more doors than me, but didn't need, I could speak the same language. So that was a really big turning point for us. And from there, we were able to scale and grow. What is the power of just connecting with other people in the industry? And how do you go about that? Because for some people that are maybe not as uh, strong in terms of walking into a room and saying, I'm going to go and meet this person, or I'm going to go and do that. What is your advice to them and, and the best thing that you've ever done in your life to be able to meet the kinds of people that you want to meet? I don't like crowds. I don't like meeting new people. But when I get connected to the right people, uh, I feel very comfortable in my story and what I want. You know, I'm, I'm very clear on, on the path that I want to go on and what I want to do. And so I don't, I'm not the best guy when it comes to networking. I'll say that. What I am is the best guy at getting the right rooms. I know that if you put yourself in the right room, good things are going to happen. And so that's what I did with Ray. I knew that, hey, if I put myself in that room, good things are going to happen when I spend time with these people that now became really good friends of mine and helped me scale. Our meetup every month is really good to just get in front of more people and stuff. Um, and then I did a similar thing when I signed up for uh, my, my newest mastermind or the mastermind Stephen I've been a part of uh, for Thrive. Um, you know, I met a guy named Cole Hatter. Somebody sent me a podcast and he was like, Hey, I'm Cole Hatter. I run real estate. I run this cool event about giving back. And I was like, man, I just want to be best friends with that guy. Like, I want to be in that circle. I want to be in that circle of influence. And, you know, th through what I've done, I realized that just being in a circle of influence could push you up to another level. And so, um, I told Steve, I sent him the podcast and I was like, I'm going to become best friends with this guy. Just watch. He's like, dude, I believe you. Like, you can make anything happen. If it's anyone who can make it happen, it's going to be you. And so I just uh, started sending some messages and reaching out. Found out they had an event going on in Vegas. Uh, flew down to Vegas. And the first night we landed, uh, it was a Thursday night. I was standing at a bar where the event was. And all of a sudden, I look over, and Cole Hatter comes walking in uh, from the door. And I was like, hey, you're Cole. He's like, oh, yeah, dude, what's up? I'm like, I'm here for Thrive. And he's like, so cool, man. Thanks so much. And I sat there and talked to Cole for 10 minutes the first night I was there. And I was just like, I don't know how I do it, dude. It just happens. It's just like, I manifest it. I, I will it to be, I don't know what it is. Uh, spent the entire weekend at the event and uh, called Steve at the end of the event and said, hey, Cole runs a mastermind. I said, I want to be a best friend to him. There's no better way to get involved with him and people like him if we do it. We didn't have the money. We didn't have anything. Put it on the visa. And four years later, uh, we've been a part of Cole's mastermind. Uh, we've leveled up all of our games. We've leveled up our network, you know, surrounding ourselves by people that were doing, you know, two, three, five, 10, $50 million a year in revenue uh, in their businesses was incredible. Learning from real estate investors that were doing huge volume was uh, one of the biggest changes for us. And so uh, I remember vividly standing on the back of Cole's house, Cole invited to his house for one of the events and just bawling my eyes out, uh, calling my mom. I remember the exact moment FaceTime was like, mom, like I told you, like, this is what I wanted. And then I just got it. Like mm -hmm. I said, I was going to become best friends with Cole Hatter. And here I am standing in his backyard. I'm like on uh, FaceTime with my mom, like walking around me, like, look at it. Like, I can't believe this happened. I'm like crying right now thinking about it because it's mm -hmm. so cool. That moment of like, who is this small town kid that grew up in a lower income family, able to go hang out with someone like Cole Hatter, who's a pretty big influencer in the world and hang out with some very successful people and learn from all these people. And it's just my willpower to get in that room, make the friends, put myself out there and, and not give up. Like, I'm not scared to go to do that next level. And I know it doesn't answer your question directly, but is um, just that story of like, don't be afraid to put yourself out there into a space that's uncomfortable. You don't have to be the best networker. You don't have to have the best skills. 
but you have to be willing to put yourself in that position to make something happen. Yeah. And I think you're downplaying a little bit your, um, your work ethic, because I know you're a guy who works incredibly hard. Um, and I, but I think I, I admire you too, because you, uh, I follow you on social media. We're obviously good friends. We, we have a, we co-founded a mastermind together with Steve as well. Our own, our own mastermind, which we we're, um, you know, halfway through year one, which has been a huge success. Um, but you know, one of the things that I admire about you is you, you have a, I, from my perspective, anyway, a really good work-life balance. Um, you work hard and then you, and then you play hard, uh, which I think is really important because, um, I'm of, of the opposite in some situations where I, I work hard, work hard, work hard, but I, I don't feel like I often have a, a good work-life balance. So how is it that you strike that work-life balance and, and where do you set the parameters and, and how do you make sure that that's a, a big part of what you do? Such a widespread topic and so many people have so many different opinions on it and um i will attest it 100 percent. i used to just work 16 hours a day every single day uh, i had a uh, non-epileptic seizure my body actually shut down uh, on me when i was 27 uh, i was just sitting there at the dinner table and just felt my whole body drain out to zero and fell over on the ground had a non-epileptic seizure and the doctor told me like you have too much stress you're not eating you're not working like if you don't get yourself fixed, you're going to have some serious health issues. And so, um, as I joined Cole's mastermind, I just like, I don't reinvent the wheel. I just find people that have what I want and duplicate what they do. Cole is a very luxury lifestyle. He has a very successful business, but he sits at home in his board shorts and flip flops every day, wakes up and hangs out with his kids. You know, he, he got it from ET, uh, Eric Thomas, but he says, I want to be a seven figure husband father, you know, uh, best friend, um, dad, like, and I want to have seven figures in my business, like seven figures in your business is one pillar of your life. I mean, mm -hmm. you start thinking like that, you're like, wow, you've got a point. Like what, how hard do you grind to make the money, but lose everything else. And, um, I've spent a lot of money and time working with coaches and self-development to realize like simple things, like what are the things that make you the happiest? And I did an exercise that was like, what are the five happiest moments of your life? And um, I wrote them out and three of them were with one of my best friends. And it was like fishing and hunting and hanging out with him doing all these like different things. And I was like, man, all I do is work. And I haven't seen my best friend in six months. He's just about to have some kids. Like how hard would it for me to be just like, I'm gonna go see him once a month. That's just it. Like if it makes me that happy, if my happiest moments are there and I can go see him once a month and that would make my happiest moments, why wouldn't I do that every day? So uh, in doing so, I actually, <laughs> it's funny. Um, so I started spending a bit more time with him, but in doing so, he saw what I was doing in real estate. And the both of us agreed like, hey, if we bought a house together, we could use that rental income to go pay for us to go do fun stuff together. Contrary to what everybody says, don't do um, business with friends and family. I'm the opposite. I believe so much in myself and what I'm doing. I want to bring all my friends and family in because then we can all celebrate together. Mm -hmm. And so him and I actually bought a rental property together and we spent three months renovating it, getting it ready, doing everything. And it was the best times that I've ever had spending with him. And now I go see him every single month just for the sole fact of like, hey, do I want to work or do I want to live a happy life? So I find that balance and finding just a few things that make me very happy and um mixing them in with my business and learning to create that balance that like it's not a time thing for me it's a happiness thing for me you know mm. i don't need to go spend uh full time hanging out with my best friend i don't need to be full time at work i just need to do things that make me happy and then when i feel unhappy do them again or i need to do things that make me work happy i do work happy so it's not so much an hourly difference in them it's just how much time does it make me happy and not happy Randy, what's your best piece of advice for someone who is about, you know, the same age, maybe in their early twenties that wants to get into real estate investing, how would you suggest they, they get started? Just getting around people that are doing stuff. When I first started out, I, I, I found some mentors that were, you know, I didn't take a real estate guru course when I first started out, I was an electrician. I just got around people that were at, had rental properties and asking them, Hey, how did you get this rental property? What are you doing? Like, People that have success or in real estate investing in particular, they want to share their wealth. They want to share their knowledge and getting online. And obviously like the regulars of looking at YouTube videos, like this channel is, is super helpful and other online resources are great. Taking courses is awesome. 
but you don't learn as much as you do as getting hands on. And so mm-hmm. finding a good mentor that's willing to take you to some job sites, walk you through some of their projects, show you some of their numbers, explain how they're doing things. There's no better way. And anyone who's under 30, people just want to support and help you. You mm-hmm. know, like Steve and I just started building development. We got connected to a guy and he said, I love you guys' attitude. I love your work ethic. I love what you're willing to put in. I love what you sacrifice. And I love your mission of what you're trying to do. How do we work together? He came to us. Steve and I were like, I don't know, man. Like we raised some money. You want us to raise some money for your projects? And he's like, I'd love to do that. Let's do it. And to this day, Steve, I had no idea why this guy just fell into our lap and wanted to work with us. But it was because we just brought all the right stuff, put ourselves in the right conversation. Still, I just turned 30 the other day. And it just blows my mind still that um, I'm still able to have these connections and grow so much because of my age. Like people actually want to help you because you're younger and they want to see you come up and grow and have success. So don't let age be a deterring factor for you. Let it actually be the thing that drives you forward. Go out and talk to me. Like, like when I have 20 year olds coming to me saying, how can we help you? Or how can we support? How can I learn? If you're willing to put in the work and you're willing to get ahead and spend some time with me, I open up my business to you. I'll show you everything. Like I want to help people that are younger get started sooner because I start at 25, but if I start at 22, I know everyone says like all these like 40 and 50 year olds that see me are like, oh man, if I could have started back when I was your age, I'm starting to say that. Like, man, if I could have started back when I was 20, like what we've done in five years of raising the, you know, nine, $9 million and, and buying 30 million in capital. Like we did that in five years. If I started five years earlier, I'd be 25 when I was first starting and getting to go there. And mm-hmm. I think anyone can do it. It's, it's actually not that, it's not that hard. It's just being able to manifest and believe that you're capable of having whatever you want. Randy, uh, thanks so much for taking some time out of uh, your day to share your story. I don't, um, you know, we've been friends for not a long time, just, just over a year now. Uh, but I don't know that I've ever heard your full story. So, so thanks for sharing that with me and my audience. I really do appreciate it. Um, it's a, it's an inspiration to, to many of us that are, you know, uh, in real estate already and for people that are just getting started. So, so thanks for, for opening up and, and sharing all that with us. Um, if you guys enjoyed the session with Randy, do me a favor, hit that like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel and, and feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. I would like to hear in the comments section below what your why is Randy's was very clear. Um, you know, the, the tragic passing of a friend was really what catapulted him to change his, his mindset and everything that he wanted to do. And I'd love to hear um, your, your motivation of why you want to be in real estate. So leave that in the comment section below. Uh, you can also check out my Facebook, Instagram, or my website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say, Randy, thanks so much for joining me. I, I do appreciate your time. I look forward to, to connecting with you at some point in person when we can open up and the country gets back to normal. But in the meantime, I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey. And uh, we'll, ch- we'll chat very soon. Thanks, man. Have a great day. Awesome. Thanks, Sam.